All right, I'm back for a little bit. Um, I've had some technical issues with my computer lately. My wireless internet keeps kicking out, and that makes it, um, through a series of events, difficult for me to make these um, audio blogs. But uh, I'm trying to work on getting it fixed, and until then, I'll just uh, keep making time to do them anyway. I'll figure something out. Okay, uh... Today we're going to go ahead and push on with full backs, trying to wrap up the entire offense. Today we'll be wrapping up the backfield. Um, full back position is not particularly glorified around the league. First, um, when I look at the full back situation up here in Seattle, first guy is of course Max Strong. He's actually pretty well known around the league. A lot, a lot of it is because of his name. People like his name. It's a pretty cool name. It's a good football name. Uh, as far as a football player, um, he's very well known up here for his abilities in the run-blocking game. That is, he's an expert when it comes to the field of <coughs> lead blocking for a running back. Um, he helped out, I believe, Chris Warren when he was here, Ricky Waters when he was here, and now he's helped out Sean Alexander and... You know, they always say that it's not just irony that all these guys did as well for us as they did. Um, you know, he's obviously great at that. He's not much of a ball toter. You can give him a handoff every now and then, and he breaks off those fluke long run ones like that one against Washington last year in the playoffs. Two years ago, sorry. Uh... And sometimes you throw him little swing passes, like I think he was our leading receiver against Detroit last year. But primarily, you want to use him as a lead blocker in the running game. He's pretty good in pass protection, too. He's old, though. He's 35. Actually, I think he's 36 now, and, you know, I'm not going to lie, last year he pissed me off. You know, he was missing his assignments, he was... He actually missed the block that ended up um, putting Matt Hasselbeck on the injured list for a month there, I believe. Um, was not very strong in the lead lead run blocking game. Uh, didn't do so well when he got the ball in his hands. Uh, last year was nasty. I don't think he deserved that Pro Bowl berth. I don't know how he got to Hawaii, but whatever, that's not really relevant. But, you know, I think he can come back this year. He'll be blocking for better players, hopefully. Last year, we had issues, and I guess that might have put more pressure on him. But uh, I just want to see more out of Mac, the same, more the same, just lead blocking for Sean a lot. Um, behind him, we have actually more of a hybrid running back fullback, Leonard Weaver, undrafted. Uh, I believe we picked him up in the 2005 offseason season undrafted free eight, undrafted rookie this guy's a monster man he's fun to watch he's got this six stiff arm and every year in the preseason he shows it to us and you know it's wild i remember in 2005 in the preseason against the saints he was just stiff arming people left and right good it was it was good i mean to watch him run like that but when you get to the regular season He's sitting behind players like Alexander and Morris and Strong and all these guys for actually touching the ball. But I think this year is going to be the year he becomes like the change, the third. I think he's going to be like the third string running back. So if something were to happen, he could play as that. And I think he could come in occasionally and tote the ball. Hopefully we might see a stiff arm, pacifier, I think some people call it. That would be cool. I know he doesn't have much of a place in this offense yet, but he's a cool player. And when Mac retires, which should be at the end of this year, especially if he keeps digressing, regressing rather, um, I'm excited to see how he takes on the blocking responsibilities. Third guy, David Kurtman. I think we drafted him in 2006 for the second day pick. Went right to the practice squad. I don't know what happened to him since. I know he did quite a bit at USC, but... I honestly don't care about him. I didn't like that pick that much. I think it was some something to do with how Holmgren was living next door to him at some point. I don't know. Okay, um, 
fullbacks around the league now. As a fullback, most fullbacks block. <clears throat> um, good example of this would be like Tony Richardson, now of the Minnesota Vikings, used to be of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I mean, like I said, lead blocking for the running back, getting um, clearing out defenders, so you, so the running back has a clear lane to go through. He was behind the success of Priest Holmes and Larry Johnson to an extent in Kansas City, and now in Minnesota, he's turning what was expected to be a lifetime backup in Chester Taylor into a 1,200-yard back. So they're they're in they're underrated, important parts of offenses. And usually behind every great running back, you can find a great blocking fullback. Um, Dane Lee and Tomlinson in San Diego has his Lorenzo Neal. Um, and again, Tony Richardson, he's blocked for quite a few great ones in his career. Sean Alexander with Max Strong. Um, yeah. And then you got, of course, fullbacks are expected to protect in the passing game. Pretty much the same crew of cast of fullbacks are known for good pass protection and um, run blocking. You know, Richardson, Neal, Strong. Um, and occasionally they touch the ball. Sometimes you give them like handoffs right up the gut and just tell them to go run over people. Most famous fullback for doing this is Mike Allstott. In fact, I think he got close to a thousand yards in a couple of seasons not a while back. But, you know, he was the A train for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for several years there. The bulldozer, the hammer. Great player. A lot of power. Um, and you got pass-catching fullbacks, too, occasionally. Like, uh, this is reaching back into history a little bit. Larry Centers, 12th all-time in receptions, I think. Um, and, you know, fullbacks all over the league are known to catch passes every now and then, uh... Lorenzo Neal does it occasionally. Uh, Richardson, he doesn't catch a lot of passes, but he's very good after the catch. I'll give him that. And that's about really all fullbacks do in the league today. And even though they're still in an underrated position, they're starting to get some credit. Okay. Best fullback in the league right now, I'm going lo with Lorenzo Neal. He spent his entire career blocking for great running backs. And he's part of the reason they're great. He can also carry the ball occasionally if you ask him to. Um, you know, part of the sick TNT combination down there. Tomlinson, Neal, and Turner. Um, an underrated fullback. Um, this is tough, but I do like Jim Finn down in New York. I know he just hit the injured reserve, but he's definitely underrated. Does a great job blocking for players like Tiki Barber, and now Brandon Jacobs. Pretty good target out of the backfield as well. Um, overrated at this point, I think it might be Mike Allstott because everybody knows who this guy is, but in terms of carrying the ball, which is what he was known for, he hasn't done anything significant in several years. Uh, breakout fullback this year, I have a real hard time telling you this because, you know, fullbacks are such an obscure position. So I'm not even going to try on this. I don't ver know very many young, promising fullbacks around the league. So, all right. That's about all i got to say about fullbacks. So, see ya. I'm out.